In the programme this time, a filthy wet well unleashes a fearful odour. It's horrendous sometimes, but uh, you get immune to it. A pest controller lets his hair down. You've got to have your own little release, haven't you? And a veteran litter picker with strong views on today's youth. People say, oh, I'll put them in the army, but the army don't want them. They just riff that. But first, Twycross Zoo in the Midlands is famous for having the largest collection of primates in the world. To Chris, animal training coordinator, these chimps are family. I've been with these guys coming up nine years now. I know them pretty well, I know the characteristics. They know me inside out as well, which doesn't help sometimes. We've got Kip down here, who's the dominant male. William actually appeared alongside Paul Daniels. Doing a magic show. Yeah, you. The first job of the day is to clean out the chimp's bedroom. It's a task that challenges Chris's sense of smell. Absolutely hums. It's a familiar odour. It's just like a sweaty, sweaty man smell. I wish I fenced some chimp deodorant for them. This is all wet and soiled, which is another good reason why we wear gloves. <laughs> it's quite a sad thing, but you find most keepers do know each individual's faeces. It's kind of those one of those things we kind of like, once you've worked out who's is who's, it's quite an achievement. The behaviour of one chimp in particular is of special interest to Chris. With Kip in here, because he's the dominant male as well, he worries quite a lot first thing in the morning. Every day he's got to like assert his dominance to the others. So you can think what that's doing to his gut, you know, you can hear it kind of swirling around in the morning. The job also challenges Chris in other ways. With male chimps, when they um, go to the toilet, they kind of think it's really fun just to hold under anything and squirt out, so that's why all the mesh gets done. Chris has a special relationship with these animals, which comes at a price. Because they know me and I work with these guys six days a week, they probably see me as the lowest of the ranking. You know, if, if there's something going on with the chimps and they're in a, in a mood or something, they take it out on me. It's like, it's all your fault. So, yeah, it's quite funny when I'm the one that feeds, cleans and looks after them but the way they respect me some ways, it's kind of like, you know, cheers, guys. Because <laughs> the chimps can actually throw as well. And if they are in a bad mood with you, they will actually throw their own feces. It's part of the job. <laughs> so what would make Chris want to do this? I've always had a passion to work with animals. Being a little kid and that, and having lots of pets. And I just knew that my interest was there. But I'm not in it for the money. I, I get my kicks from you know, passion working with animals. You know, the zoo turned around to me and said, you know, I can't pay you to work. I would, you know, carry on doing it voluntarily just for the animal's sake more than anything. Finally, Chris puts down some new bedding, recycled shredded paper. It's quite tempting to me. And can now turn her attention to their living quarters. In Warwickshire, there are over 370 sewage pumping stations, also known as wet wells. Their job is to keep effluents flowing in the right direction. This one in Coventry is due for a routine inspection. We're doing a wet well cleanse to remove any uh, commercial or domestic waste from the wet well. A quick glance reveals a filthy well in desperate need of a clean. Yeah, it's quite bad, this one, this stuff. Nappy liners, hand wipes, cleaning cloths. If this waste isn't removed quickly, the pump will become blocked and raw sewage will overflow. The team immediately get to work with a high-pressure water jet to break down the fatty deposits. It's a process that releases some pretty unsavoury odours. It's horrendous sometimes, but uh, you get immune to it. Or well, you try to. <laughs> yeah, but some days it gets the back of your throat like. There's another problem unique to this place. There's a golf club up the road, so you come to the pumping station sometimes and actually look at the, the pump. And there's a golf ball that just sits in the centre of the pump and just spins round. So consequently, it doesn't draw any liquor. The high-pressure jet has blasted the fatty deposits from the well walls and pumps, but now they must suck out the debris. Well, I mean, obviously, you can't get it... You can't get it spot this, but, I mean, if you're looking, if you're looking there, I mean, it's better than what it was. That's it. Part of the job done, yeah? Yeah, we're all finished.
but now it seems there's a problem with the pump. It's tripped and we switched it on, it's reading our amps, which indicates that there's a blockage in the pump. This job just got serious. Mice have been making merry at a Berkshire warehouse, but their days could be numbered if pest controller Steve Tiller has been successful. I'm just checking rodent baits that we've put down previously in Gerard's Cross. Could do with better weather, it's not very nice. The first line of defence is strategically placed bait outside the warehouse. These are the exterior boxes that we check to see if there's any rodent activity. Just had a few mice that have come in and put stones in on top of the bait. We'll clear those out and just renew the bait. We'll put the bag of rodenticide straight in there so the bag stays nice and dry. And then there's a little bit of loose grain in there to attract them in in the first place. They've put a lot of uh, old asphalt up against the side of the building to proof it uh, from things coming in from the field. Every now and again, you're going to get something which digs in and underneath, which is exactly what's happened here. But an easy way to rectify that is just to put some rodenticide straight down the hole and anything that's inside will eat the bait and that should get rid of the problem. And bury it all in. There's a good reason the mice are not welcome here. Uh, this warehouse is storing things like plastic cups and uh, refillable things from water dispensers and that sort of thing. Because obviously they're going to come into public use for consumables, they have to be monitored. We've got some trays of rodenticide inside to make sure that uh, there's no rodent activity. And as you can see quite clearly here, this rodenticide has been covered by bits of cardboard, leaves, anything. Uh, they cover it to store it, literally, for, for winter use. Steve doesn't stint on the tempting bait. If only they'd stop storing it and start eating it. Always keep some down near doorways. Here we've got an emergency exit door, which is something could easily get underneath. Here again, you can see exactly the same. We'll just uh, clear that and put some new, one, new bait in there. Again, more of the same, just needs renewing. It's a dirty job, but Steve doesn't mind at all. For me, sitting in an office all day doing the same things over and over again at a computer would just be... I, I couldn't do it. But for these sort of things, at least you've got different things you go to each time, whether it be a cockroach job, rat job, mouse job. They're all pretty grotty, but at least it's interesting. Again, much the same story. They've managed to chew a hole through the bottom of the bait tray there. You can see the rodenticide falling out. When Steve isn't pest controlling, he's indulging in his favourite hobby. I play bass, have done for a long time now. Uh, it is my instrument of choice. I far prefer sta uh, standing at the back and enjoying myself than standing at the front uh, trying to play solos, which I find slightly egotistical. But then again, uh, that's a guitarist all over for you. That's the first job of the day, but it won't be the last. Back at the wet well, a specialist fill fighter has arrived to tackle the broken pump. But it's not clear just what the problem is. In this case, we just had a wet well cleanse, so it could be anything really um, been sucked up the pump. With a bit of luck and tugging, all will soon be revealed. <laughs> The years, I've some massive biceps. And finally, up comes the problematic pump. They must fix it fast. The pump cannot be out for long. If you've got two pumps that have failed, the objective is obviously to get it uh, up and going as quick as possible. Obviously, they weren't, they weren't fixed. That backs up the system and goes as far as like people's houses. Once opened up, it's clear what the problem is. And it's the same old story. There you got hand wipes and all that. All that sort of thing, don't dissolve in water. <laughs> you got sanitary wear, cotton buds. Cotton buds are uh, regular, aren't they? Yeah. That there, that's where it's been on the wearing of the pump. That black line there. Acts as a brake. It acts as a brake. And obviously it slows the pump down. That's because it's a trick, because it over, overeats the pump. We sent it back to the panel to say there's something wrong and it will cut it out. 
basically do is just clean this up here and check the impeller for any chunks out of the impeller, any wear. Clearing the pump of the debris that was blocking it is all in a day's work for these filth-hardened lads, but it doesn't necessarily make them popular. Obviously, when you get stuff on you, it's funny, you walk into a, a shop and it's like a go and buy a paper and you're in the queue and it's like... Chocks away and down she goes. Hopefully, it works. A quick check and the pump is working well again. Coming up, ape keeper Chris has got her work cut out. So I'm running out of time. <laughs> the rocking pest controller meets his hero. Jimmy Page opened the door, which was a bit of a surprise from Led Zeppelin. I wasn't expecting that. And Preston Tommy faces a smorgasbord of filth. Human excrement, sick, and everything else that comes out of a human body. It's disgusting that we have to pick it up, really. at Twycross Zoo. For ape keeper Chris, the cleaning never stops. Now it's quarter past four, so I've got 45 minutes to get both day places clean, plus the chimps in, so I'm running out of time. <laughs> Marcus, is there any chance you can come and give us a hand? Chris, I'm just dumping out. I'm just finishing off feeding lemurs. These animals are from Western Central Africa, and this area replicates their natural habitat. <laughs> That's clean and done for today. With their quarters cleansed, the chimps can be readmitted. Chris gives each one of them a health check. We we'll get him to open his mouth, and with that, I can do DNA swabs. Good. This is the time I get actually have contact with these animals. Um, just builds up the trust between us. Yeah. For, for these guys, it's mental stimulation because they've got to learn you know, what I'm asking for them. So it's them participating, right foot, in getting them to present their body parts because you, couldn't, you can't touch a chimp unless they're voluntary doing it. Chris and the chimps communicate with each other at a sophisticated yeah. level. It's good. I know because I work with them a long time, I know when they're putting it on, when they are ill, you know. Or if they do have an injury, they do show me. Very ladylike, is it? Open. For Chris, the endless cleaning Good. is worth it for this remarkable rapport. With chimps, you look into their eyes, you can see their soul. There's something about them. It's absolutely you know, the best job you can do, really. It's the best species, I would say, to work with. Some filth fighters are required to kill animals. Others, it seems, are just happy to talk to them. OK, then, guys, out. In Berkshire, rat catcher and rock and roller Steve Tiller has been called out following a rodent sighting. Right, I've been called out to Pangbourne to have a look at a rat in someone's kitchen and bathroom. For Steve, it's a new house, but a familiar problem. I'm going to take the side of the bath off, have a look under there. We realised there was something there and the food was going and the toilet paper was being dragged um, behind the toilet and then uh, Bob had went into the kitchen to get some water one day and um, suddenly we realised that there was this big black thing in there that leapt under the uh, kitchen units. See where the rat's been eating some of the uh, toilet paper, funnily enough, and has been screwing it up and uh, putting it in the back corner and probably nesting on it. We just called it ratty, and uh, we'd sort of live with it, I suppose, in a way. But Steve's arrival means ratty may not be around for much longer. He's more than qualified for the job of rat extraction. I trained to be a draftsman at school and did music, but of course it's all on computer-aided design now, so of course there's no jobs going, really. <laughs> Run a record shop for years, but uh, of course record shops have become a thing of the past now, so that didn't last too long. And then um, uh, after that, found out to go and get a real job. <laughs> uh, and so here I am, doing pest control work. It's nice and warm under there. It's a great little place for, uh, for 
Place to go. Steve methodically lays out his tempting wares, much to the homeowner's relief. Oh, it's nice colour, that bait. Uh, yeah, it's dyed blue, so that when um, when they consume it, yeah, uh, their faeces is dyed blue as well uh, oh, within a right. day or so when they go to the toilet afterwards. So that way we can see if you have blue droppings yeah. afterwards that the bait has been ingested. Yeah. For rocking rat catcher Steve, this job means expecting the unexpected. I got called out um, right down towards Windsor Way and uh, for moles one day and. Uh, Jimmy Page opened the door, which was a bit of a surprise from Led Zeppelin. I wasn't expecting that. But Steve's not bumping into any of his rock heroes today. <laughs> He's busy bumping off rats. Originally, the kickboard is on here. The gentleman's taken it off at the moment. Uh, but he would have been stuck behind there. So he's only been able to come out um, through holes that he's made for himself. Uh, but what we need to do is get some redenticide down under the units again, uh, just in case he comes back into this area. Yum, yum. Let's hope. That does the trick. Now Steve can look forward to some well-earned R&R, and in his case, that means rock and roll. In Preston, Tommy Loftus and his colleague have come to deal with some pesky cigarette ends that are visible, but just out of reach. This is Linda, she's one of my operatives. She's been working for the council, how many years? About 22. About 22 years. Do you enjoy your job? You're better. You're better. <laughs> They've come armed with a suction device, but the conditions are inclement. Because it's so wet, that problem sounding, it's all sticking together, congealing. Despite their best efforts, it seems the elements are against them. And it's all just the result of thoughtless behaviour. Just people don't, just don't think. I don't think they purposely throw them away. I just don't think. But when they stand there, they throw them off in front of you, and doesn't know you a bit. But recently, Tommy's head camera has been having the desired effect. Before the camera came, people would throw it in front of you and deny it. But now with the camera, they won't, even, they won't deny it now because they know they're being seen on camera and they're very quick to pick it up and put it in the bin. A filthy alleyway nearby is their next destination. There's a lot more down and outs now and druggies. And it's getting worse. It's not getting better. It is just a drinking place for the kids. When you come round in the morning, they're all sat here drinking and blowing. And this can be dangerous work. They've had to learn to watch their backs. You get a gang of youth together, don't turn your back on them. Never, ever turn your back on them. Especially if they're being boisterous. They threw cans at us. When they, when they say they're Ball back, cans. They think it's a big joke, you know, but it's not a big joke of suddenly turning around and hitting the eye. They don't care. They don't, they don't really care, you know. That's the attitude. So what's the answer? As an ex-soldier himself, Tommy thinks the army is too good for this breed. The people say, oh, put them in the army, but the army don't want them. They're just riffraff, you know, just rubbish. No discipline. Tommy is blunt about the realities of the job. You also find uh, needles, human excrement, sick, and everything else that comes out of a human body. The dog muck It's disgusting that we have to pick it up, really germs and everything. They're so damn blip and lazy. So I can't stand that. Not to be sick. But I usually I don't let Tom do it. He does. <laughs> well, I hear the radio crack and say, Tommy, yeah. can you do me a favour? Another thing she can't stand is making coffee. <laughs> but I don't mind a brew now and then off Tom. Given the squalor and perilous nature of the job, it wouldn't be surprising if Tommy and Linda were bitter. Nothing could be further from the truth. My job is fantastic. I enjoy every minute of it. I'm 67, I could have retired two years ago, but because I like the job so much, I stay on. People say, how can you do this job? But it's a good job. I don't like it anyway. Tommy and Linda live to fight the filth of Preston another day. Right, Linda, job well done. You can make me a brew then. You work well today under supervision. Right now, they're off for a cuppa. <laughs> Pest controller Steve has arrived home and he's got a busy evening ahead. So, uh, quick fish and chips for me and my son, and then we're off to the studio. Uh oh, take away food and rat poison. Don't worry, I'll wash my hands first. <laughs> there you go, mate. Cheers. Steve's first priority is his son. Nice fish. That's all right. But music is a close second. 
Do you know, the first band that I listened to that I actually thought I, I, I want to play that ashamedly was status quo. <laughs> but, you know, you can't knock the quo. Everybody knocks them, but I'd swear if you go and see them, you know, after 10 minutes, it doesn't matter who it is, your foot's tapping and you're into it. You know, you've got to start somewhere, and that's where I started for sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just sort of got into the heavier stuff after that. Bizarrely, Steve keeps pets, which look not unlike rats. We used to have rats, but, um, well, I can't... I can't keep pet rats, can I really? That's just too hypocritical. So we've got a couple of gerbils, and actually they're really, really friendly. They're really, really good, good fun. But if they misbehave, you know, blue biscuits from the back of the car for both of them. See you later, mate. Bye. You good? Mwah. See you later, you guys. At last, Steve is able to do something for himself. He's heading out for band practice. Don't humiliate me on TV. One, one. We bash through a number. When we were a lot younger, we did a load of gigs. Back then, I think we had the energy to do it. I don't think I could face it now, to be honest with you. Times have changed, and uh, you know, I don't pretend to have changed with them. You know, it's a bit of fun. You've got to have your own little release, haven't you? For a rat catcher, a county surveyor and a salesman, we make a bit of a racket, don't we? <laughs>